Okay, this is a fly that we call the rogue, rogue hex. And it's very similar to, a, to an old fly called the crossdresser from Jeff Andrews, Jeff Bear Andrews years and years ago. Um, but it's a very simple little fly. Um, it's just a hex nymph and you can basically just dead drift it or if you want, you can even swing it at the end, but it's, you know, primarily designed to be fished just like a nymph. So, um, but all it is is just grizzly marabou for the tail which is actually more like half of the body. Um, and then some, some S-Taz underneath and some teal flank for the legs, thin skin for the shell back, and then some, some bead chain eyes. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, and you can tie a bunch of these pretty quick once you get the, once you get the hang of it. So um, the hook that we tie this one on is a 1530, in a size eight. It's kind of our general purpose steelhead nymph hook, nice and stout, down eye. Um, you can tie anything on it, you know, stoneflies, pheasant tails, hexes. It's just sort of the, the general steelhead hook that we like to use. So, and then for the thread is just our standard Vivis 6 aught fluorescent orange. Um, if you've ever seen our videos, we love this stuff. It's nice and bright even when it's wet. So, um, so to start, you just go ahead and do a thread base. It doesn't have to be anything serious, but all the way down the shank to the bend and then back up to the front. Get rid of your tag. And then for this one, I've got bead chain, but you can certainly use the, the plastic mono eyes if you want. Um, I have found that the, the plastic mono eyes, um, I think they look better just because they're a little wider spaced and just more round, I think. But um, they seems like the last couple of years, they seem to break really easily. So I've been using the bead chain more often now just because they're, they're brass, so they don't, they don't break. But either one, whatever you got, works just fine. So figure eight those in there. And then we're gonna slide down to the back where we're gonna put in our Grizzly Marabou. So you've probably seen these in the shop. This is what it looks like in the pack. It's just a big bag of loose uh, chickaboo feathers, basically. It comes from kind of the back end of a, of a rooster. And for this fly, we like to use a particular type of feather. Um, I'll show you some good ones that I sorted out. We're looking for ones that kind of look like this. So if you notice this feather, um, all, the, all the barbs on it, when you pull it forward or pull it upward, they're all flush, you know? So when you tie this in here, it's gonna, it's gonna give you a nice, straight, stout body. And you're gonna have to sort through the bag to find feathers that will work right or work well for this fly, like here's another one. Kind of doesn't look like until you straighten it out, but once you pull this down, all those feather tips are flush. That's kind of what you're looking for for this fly. The ones you don't want to use <clears throat> is one like this, for instance. Um, once you pull these barbs back, see how you've got that prominent tip there? You can certainly use this, but it's just not gonna, it's not gonna look real good when it's wet. So um, here's one that was, is okay. It's kind of fluffy, but basically point being is you want to find a, like here's another bad one. This one wouldn't be so good. See how thin it is? None of the tips are flush. It's just kind of a raggedy, wretched looking thing. So trash, garbage. And then these bags, you'll have a lot of that stuff. It's called drop. Just trash feathers that just get mixed into these things that, you know, they, they I think they sweep it off the floor and fill these bags, but you'll get about half. Half of them are good, like this one. So yeah, you're looking for one with these, these tips are nice and straight, nice and flush. So um, you just take one of these things, it's nice and thick, and you can tie it in so it's about the same length as the shank itself. Right about there. It could be a little longer, it could be a little shorter, doesn't matter. And then you can cover all this with thread and make sure it doesn't slip out. Get rid of your tag. And then come through here and smooth all this out. So yeah, that's it. That's the back half of this thing. It's pretty simple. And if you want, um, sometimes you'll find those feathers are a little sparse. So you can certainly take a second feather and just double it up. You know, if you're down running low on the bottom of this bag and you're left with some of that trash, you can you can put two on there to kind of fill it out. So, so there's our tail. And then our next material is going to be our shell back which is just a piece of thin skin. You can use the, the black, 
Um, you can use the model Bustard, doesn't really matter. I do like the black on this one though, it's nice and it contrasts good with, uh, with all the materials. So I've got a little strip of black here. It's about an eighth of an inch thick. So you can go ahead and you're gonna have to peel off this paper backing. A lot of people don't do that, but yeah, you wanna peel it off that paper. And then go ahead and tie it down right at the base of that tail. Cover up the, uh, the butt end. And keep in mind this thing has to be on the very top of the hook. So you can sort of check it, make sure we're situated good here. Looks good. A couple more wraps there. Okay, now we're set up. So, next material that just sort of acts as filler is going to be this Crustacean Tan Estaz. Comes in uh, little baggies, but I like the Crustacean Tan. You can certainly use, there's another color I like is Peach. Um, but this Crustacean Tan, if, you, if, you're, t if you're tying this to, to imitate a hex, this Crustacean Tan color is a good choice. They, the hexes have that sort of tan yellowish color. So, so just tie that in at the base of the wing case there and go ahead and just palmer that all the way down. Nice and close. Sort of use your other hand to peel back those fibers to make way for the next wrap. And you want to leave yourself a little space right behind the eyes. Very small space, but just enough to give us room to tie down our, our legs, which again is, is uh, teal flank. So that's done, you can get rid of this. And then one thing that I like to do on this pattern is, is fluff up this S-Taz and give it some long cuts on top here to flatten it out. And what that does is, is it lowers the the S has so this wing case can come through and it ends up just laying down a little better and flatter. So totally optional. You don't really have to do that, but I just like the way it looks at the end. So all right, so we're gonna kind of clear some space with our thread here for our legs. Like I said, that's gonna be <clears throat> teal flank. And same with the grizzly mare where they come in these loose bags. And with this, just like mallard flank, uh, you're gonna end up with a considerable amount of drop, which is just the garbage feathers. So like, here's one I see right here. This one is a good example of drop. This is a nothing feather. It's just something they swept up and put in the bag. Um, you could use this for other flies, but for this fly, we're looking for feathers that have the classic teal flank look, um, something like this, this really prominent striping and barring. And then when you splay this out and we turn it through the fly, you're gonna end up with this nice variegated look. Um, so these are the feathers that we're after. So I'll show you some other feathers that are sort of garbage. Like here's one in that same bag that's much bigger. It's got a black tip on it. Um, like I said, you could, use, you, you could use that for like a spay fly maybe or anything else. But for this fly, it's just too big. It's you know asymmetrical, it's just kind of junky. So you're gonna get a lot of that anytime you're working with natural materials. So, um, but here's one that we're kind of looking for. You know, the size is appropriate. It's gonna end up touching kind of the base of the tail when we wrap this forward. So we're gonna try this feather and see how it looks. But what you wanna do is peel back the, the barb so you sort of form a notch in the tip. And we're gonna tie our thread right there and then we're gonna sort of just wrap this whole feather like four or five times to, uh, to give our impression of legs here. Actually, I should clarify one thing. If you look here too, this feather does have like a kind of a curve to it, like a cup. I don't know if you can see that real well, but you wanna wrap this so that that cup is facing back toward the end of the fly. Um, if you wrap it like this, I don't know if you can see that, but if you wrap it like this, the legs are gonna be kind of forward, and I'm sure it doesn't make a difference to the fish, but I like all those legs to be kind of streamlined and facing the back of the fly. So, so here's our kind of curve, you can see that. So you can sort of lay it in at an angle, get your thread in that notch that we talked about. And then this forward piece, you can just fold back, tie it in, it's not gonna hurt anything. Okay, 
So that thing's ready to go. And then for feathers this small, um, a pair of ha hackle clamps, hackle pliers really helps. Um, so here you can sort of see that cup I was talking about, but see how the feathers are kind of cupped backwards? You wanna keep that orientation the whole time. So do your first wrap and just make sure that it's keeping that angle. So there's one wrap. See how they're sort of leaning back a bit? It's kind of what you're after. Two. So this feather is not the best, but we're just gonna go with it. So that's three turns. And we're gonna kind of sink it right behind the eyes here. Do one behind, one in front, one behind, another in front. So that's not going anywhere. So then you can come in nice and close here, get rid of that stem. So that feather, you know, it's not great, but um, that's just the nature when you're working with, you know, these natural materials. Um, like on this first fly, um, I just happened to get kind of lucky and, and found a feather that worked really well. Um, so you're just gonna have to sort of get a feel for it and really parse out your feathers. I like to dump the whole bag out and just kind of dig through it and find the feathers that look the best, but you get the idea. That one will work fine. Um, so we're getting close here. So all we got to do now is just fill in this gap around the eyes with this thread. Gives it a little more color, kind of a hot spot of the fish like. And then we're going to hang our thread right behind the eye of the hook. Kind of spread these legs apart nice and down. Make way for this wing case. And we fold this thing forward. Get it nice and flat, nice and tight, and then catch it. Okay, and then you're gonna wanna fold this back up and then get a thread wrap right on the hook to anchor it in. Then fold it back forward, another one down here, and then another one on just the hook. That helps to really seat it. Okay, once that's in, we can go ahead and whip finish. Always good to whip finish twice. Okay. Get the thread out of there. And then we can go in and cut our wing case out. Okay. That's pretty much it. And then one thing I like to do is take this uh, UV resin, whatever you got, this happens to be the thin, um, but you can flip this fly put a little bit of the stuff underneath. What that does is helps those, prevents these eyes from spinning and just adds a little more durability to the fly too. And then I do one quick coat on top. Man, I'm shaking like crazy. One quick coat on top. Again, just gives it a little more durability and the light kind of hits it differently and it just looks buggy, I don't know. So there you go, that's the Rogue Hex. And we've caught plenty of fish on this thing all year long, fall, winter, spring. But it's pretty simple and like I said, once you get the hang of it, you can really go nuts with this thing and fill a whole box if you want. Um, works really good in the, in the late fall, early spring. Because um, it kind of, it can imitate a Hex, but it can also imitate like a par, you know, like a small little baby salmon. Um, so if you wanted to tie some of these up to imitate more of that, um, you could simply change the color of Estaz to like an orange, you know, or that peach color or even red. Um, so it's a nice steelhead pattern. Um, we've done really well on it. So, um, so yeah, hope you like it. Tie some of these up. Let us know what you think. And if you haven't subscribed already, uh, make sure to do so. Thanks.